in fifth grade class at Mount Madonna School. Each year, the fifth grade chooses an environmental issue that they want to change for the better. This year, our class has decided that we wanted to help the blue whales, especially after we found out that the largest animal on Earth is threatened because of our choices. We believe that we can and will change the world. Our class has been working on this project for about nine months. To start our project, we needed to learn about these majestic whales so that we could teach others. Their habitat in Monterey Bay, the threats they face, and the conservation efforts to protect them. To learn as much as possible about the blue whales, we met up with Save the Whales, as this organization began in 1977 to protect the blue whales, and now works to protect all whales within the ocean. We also, we also met with Tom from Save the Whales, who taught us all about whale anatomy, their migration habits, localizations, and most importantly, their threats. We met with Jackie Nunes from The Last Plastic Straw, who taught us about plastic pollution and how it's affecting these mammals as a whole. Using all this information, we created, we wrote research papers and created slideshows to teach each other all, of, all about our, our research. Blue whales are a marine mammal found in almost all the waters around the world. They are the biggest animals in the world and their length can get up to three school buses long and they can weigh up to 300,000 pounds. They feed on some of the smallest animals in the world, crow. They eat up to 40 million or 8,000 pounds of milk a day. They, instead of teeth, blue whales have baleen plates, which are made of the same things our fingernails and hair are made. They are used as a comb to filter out the krill from the water. Blue whales are the biggest animal in the world and live in mostly all the waters in the world but are extremely hard to find. And scientists still have much to learn about the blue whale. Many of the threats that blue whales face are human created threats. First and foremost is plastic pollution. Blue whales are filter feeders, meaning they open their mouth and gulp down anything that looks like food. If there's plastic in the water, they eat that as well. This plastic comes from us, as 80% of what we use makes its way through the watershed and into the gyres of the ocean. We make 300 million tons of plastic in America each year. So imagine 8 out of 10 pieces of that plastic going into the ocean and into the waves. In fact, over 100,000 marine mammals die each year from eating our plastic because it fills up their stomach and they can't eat real food. Each year, more news stories come out about a whale dying from eating our plastic. One whale had 88 pounds of plastic in its stomach. Another pregnant whale had 50 pounds of plastic in its stomach. And just a few months ago, a very rare rice's whale died from a jagged piece of plastic cutting its insides. There is so much plastic in the ocean that even plankton, the base of the food web, has plastic inside of their systems. A recent study has determined that there's an estimated 125 trillion, yes, trillion pieces of plastic floating in the ocean. Every water sample taken has had plastic in it. That's scary. However understandable, when you think about it, every piece of plastic ever created is still on Earth in one form or another. We can all help, we can all help protect the oceans and the whales by simply rethinking about our everyday habits. It's really that simple. By changing our everyday habits, we can reduce the plastic pollution that we use and keep it out of the world's ocean. Recycling is great, but remember that in the U.S. we can only recycle plastic with the number 1, 2, and sometimes 5. That means that about 10% is actually recycled even when we put it in a recycling bin. Those little chasing arrows don't mean you can recycle it. They just tell you what type of plastic it is. Also, when we recycle plastic, it downgrades, which means it becomes weaker and weaker each time 
until after two or three times it ends up needing to be thrown away. By simply changing our shopping habits and buying in bulk, we can reduce the amount of plastic packaging that is used. When you think before you buy and pick something that is packaged in metal or paper or glass, you are making a difference and helping to reduce plastic. A simple decision such as buying a go drink in a glass bottle can help instead of a plastic bottle or using a paper produce bag instead of a plastic bag for your groceries can lower the plastic that ends up in the ocean e each year. By finding reusable options for our everyday single-use plastic items, we can reduce the amount of plastic that we use. A metal straw, reusable cup, or reusable bag can make a huge difference in the amount of plastic that enters the ocean. All the threats the blue whales face are noise, pollution, ship strike, and entanglement. When choosing a whale watching bar or any boat, we can help protect the whales by making sure we choose ships that keep their distance and reduce beam areas where whales are migrant. We can also help by supporting laws that require ships to keep their distance and keep cargo ships out of areas where whales live and migrate. Noise pollution is a silent threat because we humans often don't understand just how our activities underwater are. Cargo ships not only strike whales but create a loud, low sound that interferes with whales' abilities to communicate with each other. Other sounds, like the air gun for oral dr drilling and navy sonar, are so loud that they confuse whales and cause them to beach themselves or shatter their earbuds. As for entanglement, the best thing we can do to protect the whales is making sure we choose the best seafood choices. Avoid buying fish that are pull on long line, drift net, gill net, or troll cod. It is best to buy fish that are pull on or troll cod. Avoid buying seafood that is long line, gill net, drift net, or troll cod because these have a lot of bycatch and unwanted animals. Caught. We can, by supporting laws that require fishermen to keep track of their nets and work to eliminate ghost nets, we can help the whales and other animals that get tangled in these mass nets floating around our oceans. Once we learned about the blue whale, we tried to find ways we could help protect it and teach others how to protect it. We started by using our constitutional rights to share our knowledge with our local, state, and federal representatives. We wrote letters supporting the surfing pond, plastic cutlery, bans on ghost nets, asking cargo ships to avoid whale migration routes, and breeding or feeding areas. We are working with our congressmen to establish a blue whale bay. We are working with Congressman Panetta to bring awareness around the world so people will recognize this amazing, majestic marine man. To determine where this trash is coming from that enters the ocean, we tracked our household waste for five days and mechanically drew individual tie graphs. Through this data, we were able to see the average amount of waste used by fifth grade households. As a result of their data, each of our families made a pledge to find one way our household could reduce waste to benefit the blue whales. We also wanted to inspire others to go outside to pick up trash to prevent it from entering the oceans and the whales. We designed a cleanup challenge titled Stop the Pollution, We Have a Solution. This challenge asked for people to go outside, pick up and tally trash, and send in their tally sheet and a selfie. We created posters and a short video to advertise the challenge. Anyone who participated was entered in a raffle and given the chance to win one of our eco-friendly prize baskets that we put together. Remember, just one simple action can make a huge difference. To fully include the blue whales in our curriculum, we worked with our art teacher, Angela, to create sea creatures made out of single-use plastic to bring awareness to plastic. We made a large jellyfish sculpture and other sea creatures like fish, and sea turtles to bring awareness to the public and our school. We also worked with our ninth grade buddies and the high school marine biology teacher over Zoom to fully learn about plastic and its effects on animals. We watched a documentary titled Plastic Oceans where we saw huge amounts of plastic going into our oceans 
and washing up on beaches worldwide and how it is hurting almost every animal in the world. We also worked in different science labs with them to examine more closely the plastic that is showing up in the gyres of the oceans and we created videos and posters to bring awareness to the harms of single-use plastic. Lastly, our class has created a short educational film about the blue whale to teach the public about the blue whale and how to help with their survival. Our film was written, filmed, acted, edited, and sold by us. We are selling our movie as a way to raise money for the organizations that have worked with us to support the blue whale and their habitat. Part of our funds will go to support the work at Save Our Whales so they can in turn teach other students about the blue whale and will hopefully inspire them to protect the environment and the blue whales. Our movie is about an average kid named Dorothy who is unaware that her actions are affecting the blue whale. Until one day when she is swept away into the oceans of Oz during a nap. There she meets Glenda the Goodfish, who informs her that the only way to get back home is to follow the yellow current flow and seek help from the great and powerful Oz. Along her way, she meets a few friends who help her better understand the threats to the blue whale. And she also encounters the Wicked Witch of Waste and her micro trash box. Will Dorothy ever be able to return home? Will she ever find the great and powerful Oz? Or will she be trapped in the Wicked Witch of Waste's plastic palace forever? We are proud to present the fifth grade original parody film, An Ocean of Oz, A Whale of a Tale. And that concludes the Blue Whale presentation. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Jennifer? Miss Liz, would you think that there's a way that we can save the largest creature on Earth? Like, is there something that we can do about it to help it? That's right. If we use our brains, we can find ways to help the blue whales in our everyday actions. If I use my brain, I'd use it to find a way out of this class. Oh, uh, it breaks my heart to see all these amazing creatures being affected by our choices and our habits. Give me a break. There's no way we can help the whale. Do you know the whale personally? Do you see him every day? And there's no way that what you do is affecting them. I wish I had the courage some of those scientists do. They would endlessly fight to protect them. Man, that takes courage. If you ask me, it takes courage to make it out to recess. Miss Liz, is it time for lunch yet? Yes, it looks as if it is. I just wish you kids would stop and think for a moment that the world's largest creature could be gone in your lifetime. That's pretty deep when you think about it. As deep as my empty stomach. Can we go out? Fine. <laughs> I'm heading out to recess. Anyone want to join? Okay, that's fine. is an epic creature and the largest creature on the planet. The blue whale, or baleen ultramusculus, can grow up to 98 feet long and weigh about 110,000 to 330,000 pounds. They have yellow underbelly that can also be a reddish color. Their top side is a gray-blue. Even though the blue whale is called the blue whale, it is actually more of a grayish shade of blue. They have two flippers, a fluke, which is also called the tail, and a dorsal fin. The peduncle is a muscle that is attached to the fluke. The blue whale's head is shaped like a U, and it is a molted gray-blue color. On the side of the head, you can find their eyes, which are as big as a grapefruit. Also, on their head, you can find their ears, which are located behind the eyes. On the top of the blue whale's head is a blowhole. The blowholes are made up of two nostrils that are big enough for a small child to crawl inside. The blue whale can hold 5,000 liters of air in their lungs. The blue whales also have throat grooves, also called ventral pleats. They are used to allow their mouth to expand so they can lunge feed. Lunge feeding is when they expand their plates and lunge toward a large squirrel of quill and swallow it at once. 
They have about 400 baleen plates in their mouth. The baleen plates are made from keratin, which is what our fingernails are made from, and are used like teeth, which they use to filter shrimp and krill. They lick the food off their baleen plates with their tongue, which is about 400 pounds. The blue whales live to be 80 to 90 years old. Scientists determine this by the blue whale earwax. Every two to three of those years, they have babies. Blue whales can have babies when they are around five to 15 years old. Blue whales typically migrate from their feeding grounds when mating and are pregnant for about 10 to 12 months. A baby blue is called a calf, like a cow, and it is about 6,000 pounds at birth. The calves nurse on their mothers for six to seven months. A blue whale calf will usually stay with his or her mother for about a year. Even though these are the largest creatures on earth, they are incredibly hard to find in the ocean. Sadly, these mysterious mammals of the sea are endangered due to human-caused threats.
give them back to me. I'm the only one that knows how to use them, and they won't be any use to you. Keep them tight. They must be powerful or else she wouldn't want them. Now be gone, wicked witch of the waste, before she cleans you up too. I'll be gone for now, but I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> you know, I think we better get home. Well, the only way to get home is to find your great and powerful oz by following the all current form. Is it the yellow brick road? We, this is the ocean. We don't have roads. We have currents. To follow the yellow curve flow. Wait, what happens if we get lost? Just follow the yellow curve. <laughs> Getting trapped in loose nets are a major threat to the blue whale. Blue whales become entangled in fishing nets in two ways. First, there is bycatch. This is when animals that aren't trying to be caught get tangled in nets. There are many different kinds of nets and lines currently in use by commercial fishermen that marine animals get entangled in. One of the main types is a trawl net that works by dragging on the bottom of the middle of the sea. Another common net that is harmful is a drift net which is a net that is not anchored and floats with the current. Gill nets are also dangerous, as these nets try to snag the gills by having large rectangular nets that stretch from the bottom to the top of the water column to catch anything that tries to swim by. Lastly, creel nets catch a lot of bycatch. Creel lines are the line attached to a big pot like traps and animals are getting stuck in the lines which are attached to the pot at the bottom of the line. Whales often get caught in these creel lines and drag the pots around as they try to get free. The second major way blue whales get entangled is through ghost nets. Ghost nets are any type of net that is lost at sea or floating around. There are no laws requiring fishermen to find lost nets, so many of those nets drift around and connect together, creating giant nets that catch a bunch of wildlife along the way. An estimated 640,000 loose nets in the ocean at this moment, they are killing an estimate of 1,000 marine animals a day. In fact, on the west coast alone, we have 17 whales reported last year that were entangled with three whales dying. This is a big deal when you consider how few baby whales are born each year. This threat can be reduced or eliminated by supporting sustainable fishing practice, like pole or single-use caught fish. Also, by supporting legislation that requires tracking of nets to prevent ghost nets would greatly reduce amount of whales and other animals that become entangled each year. The yellow current flow. Follow the yellow current flow. The yellow current flow continues over there. Oh, okay then. We can just go that way. Watch out! Who said that? Where are we? Who are you? I'm a bottlenose dolphin, and I've been stuck here for a year. Those are strikes. They can They'll strike you down if you try to cross paths with them. That sounds awful. Don't they know how to share the space? 
Nope, they just keep coming and coming, and I try to get past them, but it's just too dangerous. Well, maybe if we work together, we can do it. Yes, if we dig deep in our hearts, we can find a solution to all the world's problems. You know what? The universe's problems. The universe, the world's problems, they're infinite. But if you dig deep in your heart, you can find a solution to each and every one of them. But that's the problem, man or dog. Man, dog. Man or dog, I don't have a You mean like Iron Man? That's rough. Get it? Ruff, ruff. We are heading to the great and powerful Oz. And maybe you can ask for a heart to find out how to stop all these strikes. I bet if we put our heart into it, we can help share the sea so every creature can get where they need to go. Another threat to blue whales are ship strikes. Ship strikes are when a ship and an animal, like a whale, collide. Many whales, not just blues, are hit by ships and not only kill or injure the whale, but damage the ship and possibly injure the passengers. Fatal ship strikes could be in the hundreds each year. Ship strikes of whales are hard to measure as they are often not noticed and sometimes not reported. As study found on average that 80 whales die a year from ship strikes along the west coast. Many efforts have been taken towards making ships more compatible with whale conservation, like reducing ship speeds, creating distance laws where whales are known to migrate, and creation of system, like whale alert. Whale Alert is an app to help reduce ship strikes that tell ships if there are whales in the area. However, there is still lots of work that needs to be done because new satellite data shows that whales deal with over 1,000 shipping vessels during one feeding season. This is why a large amount of whales show some evidence of at least one injury from a ship strike, so we know the strikes are a common thing happening. Be sure to support laws that require boats to keep a safe distance from whales and work to avoid shipping lanes in feeding, migrating, and breeding areas during certain times of the year. We must be getting closer to the Emerald Cup Forest because it's getting darker. A serious but invisible threat to the blue whales and many animals that use echolocation in the ocean is noise pollution. Noise pollution is when human-caused noises like sounds of cargo ships traveling or sonars interfere with the ability for the marine animals to live. Marine animals use sound in the ocean to hunt for food, communicate, locate breeding patterns, and stay alert for predators. When human-caused noises interfere with their ability to communicate or hear, often consequences are deadly. In fact, in recent studies, scientists have found that some sonars are just so loud to the ocean animals it would be sitting next to a super jet taking off. These sounds are damaging for the animals as they often hurt their eardrum or shatter their ear bones, leaving them without the ability to survive. Even worse, the seismic air guns used for oil exploration in the ocean. These blasts are so loud that the hydrophones in Virginia could hear the blast that was set off from Brazil. No wonder the ear bones of the blue whales can easily shatter. Scientists have found that many mass strandings of whales have been caused by confusion due to noise pollution. In November 2020, nearly 100 pilot whales died of a mass stranding. These have happened over history, but scientists have found that many were linked to confusion due to noise pollution. This silent killer in the ocean can be stopped if we support legislation that avoids using such sound. 
especially in the areas where the whales migrate, breed, and feed. They're getting close. Now go, my micro trash bots. Get the kid and her little dog, too. I don't care what you do with the rest of them. Turn them into plastic waste if they want. But bring me the girl and the dog, unharmed. But take special care of those ruby pearls. I want those the most. Now fly, my micro trash bots. Fly, fly. <laughs> Plastic is a major threat to the blue whale and all marine life. Plastic kills by entanglement, suffocation, or when they digest it, it fills up their stomach so they cannot eat anymore, so they die from starvation. Many whales, like the blue whale, are found beached as they have starved from eating so many plastic items. For example, in March 2019, a beaked whale was washed up in the Philippines with 88 pounds of plastic including bags, nets, ropes, and bottles in its stomach. Whales and other marine mammals think they are not hungry because plastic has made them feel full, but actually they are dying from not having any food. Plastic gets into our ocean by flowing through lakes, rivers, and streams all over the country, and eventually it all ends up in the ocean. In fact, 80% of what we use ends up in the ocean. There is an estimated 150 million metric tons of plastic in the ocean. Keep in mind that one metric ton is 2,205 pounds of trash. So that is 330 billion, 750 million pounds of trash floating in our oceans right now. If you think about it, every piece of plastic that has ever been made is still around. And with 300 million tons of plastic being made every year, this problem is growing larger by the minute. All plastic in our ocean isn't surprising because in America, each person uses 185 pounds of plastic each year. There are about 300 million people in America, so that is 8 million pounds per year for the whole country and 80% of that goes into the ocean. And this kills about 100,000 marine mammals like the blue whale each year and 1 million seabirds a year. The solutions are simple. By saying no to everyday single-use items, you can help prevent the plastic from entering our ocean. By saying no straw please or bringing your own shopping bags, you can reduce the 500 million straws used every day in America. The 100 billion plastic bags used a year. By bringing a reusable water bottle, you can help reduce the 50 billion bottles used each year. You can even buy juice in large containers and fill up a water bottle to reduce the plastic. Each and every choice you make to use a little less plastic keeps it out of the ocean and from killing animals like the majestic blue whale. We are here! We are here to save you! <laughs> Micro trash bots, get them! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
And you, Lion, you have always had courage. You can help fight for the blue whales. Can? I can. I can. I can also use my right to ask for laws to limit noise pollution, to prevent whale stranding, so that whales can communicate. I can find the courage to speak up and teach others. I can create change. Well, what about us? We just want to get home. You have always had the power to get back home. We have? Yes, but you should ask Linda. I have choices to make every day to help save the whales and the ocean. Wait, what? No! Is he wearing a bathrobe? I think so. change for the blue whales, the ocean, and us. 